Let's now add more methods into our student class. So before we program in Java, let's get the idea straight on the iPad. So now if you look at what we have done so far, so we got a student object over here and a courses array at size five. You can see that the first three slots uh, are now storing addresses for the three course record objects over here. And the uh, third slot, uh, sorry, the fourth slot and fifth slot are pointing to now at the moment. Okay, that's really important to tell. Okay, I'll just write it down anyway. Now over here and also now over here. Okay, so now what we would like to do now is to add two methods. And before we define how the methods should work, let's worry about how they how they should be called, first of all. So one would be accessor, the other one would be mutator. Okay, let's do the accessor first. Okay, let's now have a look at uh, this one over here. Okay, for, uh, you can see that first of all, S over here is the context object, and we are using a dot notation. When we say S dot, that means we are trying to manipulate this particular object over here. Okay. And then the method we would like to define is called get marks. And it's going to say, given the name of the course, we remember each course has a title. And now you can see that we are trying to pass the name over here. So get marks, and then we pass a string literal over here, for example, EECS 2030. You can see somehow this EECS 2030 matches the title for this particular course record objects. And what we would like to return is the numerical marks associated with the same objects for the course record. In this case, it would be zero. So the return value for this should be zero. It should return. It should return zero. Okay, so now how do we go about implementing this method? So the idea is very easy. Since you have an array of course records, so you cannot get around with having a loop to iterate through from the beginning until the end of the array. Okay, so and then to see which course objects that is being pointed to actually has the matching title. The end, that object should really be the one to uh, retrieve the marks. Okay, so now let's just run through this idea very quickly. Okay, so now let's say somehow we're going to go over the courses array and then we're gonna say for, we can use a for loop and then use integer uh, i as the loop counter. And then we're gonna run through from left to right, one by one. And you can see a position zero over here is pointing to this particular object, which already got, uh, which does not have the matching title because you can see courses at position zero and then the title is gonna be EECS 1022, which does not match EECS 2030. So we go to the next one. And in the second iteration, we'll see that courses at position one, and then it has the matching title over here, which is EECS 2030. And in that case, we'll simply return the marks zero. That's what we will do, okay? So now you can, I think in the previous, uh, Maybe, maybe you noticed that in the previous illustration, I, I think I meant to say the zero should be from this zero over here rather than here. Okay, hopefully, hopefully you noticed that. Okay, so now let's continue with this. So now how do we go about implementing this idea in Java? So we just need a for loop. Let's see how we can do that quickly. Okay, and then I'll run it uh, with a debugger with you. Okay, so now let's go to our student class over here and then let's now define that uh, accessor method. So now we're gonna say, it's gonna return the marks. So it's gonna be returning integer because we know that uh, for the course record class, we know that the marks will be integer. Okay, so that's why the return type should also be integer. Let's say get marks. Okay, and then we're gonna say uh, string title, the title of the course. Given the title of the course return its associated marks. Okay, that's what we want to do. Okay, so now what we do is we can simply do uh, as follows. So now we eventually we're going to return the marks for sure. So uh, we can say integer marks. Let's say initially just zero or you can even put minus one. Okay, it doesn't matter. Eventually we're going to reassign this to a proper value and then eventually we're going to return marks. Okay, and now we can say for integer i is assigned to zero. Remember array indices always start from zero. So go from zero 
over here until for now let me say i will go until the end of the array and see if that will work so now in this particular case uh uh, you can simply you don't you, you, really, you really don't want to just say until four because uh, we may change the size of the array later. So now it's better to say uh, uh, this dot courses dot length. Okay, and then we'll say i is less than. In this case, this dot courses the length. What is that? So this dot courses the length. So this dot courses dot length and because when we write this expression here we write it in the context of students so this means the students the student that courses so that means the students the student that courses the length what is what's the size of the array that should be five right one two three four five okay five elements in the array so that should be five okay and then we have i plus plus okay that's what we have and then Every time, so let's say, I, let me make it a little bit more uh, worthy for you, but actually hopefully that's more understandable. Course record, let's say the current one we are looking at is assigned to, okay, courses at position uh, I. So what does that mean? Okay, let's go to the diagram over here. Okay, you can see, uh, think it this way. We have our integer I as a loop counter. Initially, I is equal to zero. Okay, initially zero. And then when we say courses, courses i, what does that mean? That means courses i is going to be this slot over here, which point which stores the address that's pointing to this object over here. Okay, that's courses i. Okay, and then uh, what about the next one? When, uh, and of course, every time we're gonna say i plus plus at the end of the iteration. So that means i will be incremented from zero to one. And then what will courses i be? So that will be courses at position one. In that case, it will be referring to, uh, i will become one in the second iteration, which will be referring to this particular slot, which stores the address for this particular course record objects. Okay, so basically what, what we are trying to do is, we're just creating another current as a local variable to say, just for us to make, make it easier for us to write the expression uh, following this line, I'll show you. Okay, so now the current, for example, initially let's say i is simply zero in the first iteration. So that means current is going to point to wherever courses at position zero is pointing to. Okay, that's the first iteration. What about the second iteration? Let me use a different color. So in the second iteration, so let's say in the second iteration, i will be uh, incremented to one, right? From zero to one. In that case, the current is going to assign to, you can see courses at position i, which is at position one. In that case, it's pointing to this particular course object, and we're gonna say current is now going to point to this particular course record. So we keep shifting what current is pointing to to the right by one position, right, in the array. Okay, hopefully you see that. And then, so now, once we are done with this, so we can say, what should we do with the current? So current is the uh, current course record we're examining. So we wanna see if its title is matching the title we are looking for. If it is matching, then uh, the marks should be returned. Otherwise, we should go to the next one and see, uh, and see the next matching one. Okay, let's see what we can do. So now what we do is we can say if, let's say over here, uh, current, which is a course, dot, title, which is a string, dot, equals, you can see over here, again, we are using dot notation. You can see current is a course. Current dot title is referring to its attribute of type string. And for string value, we can say dot equals with another string value. If it is uh, equal to title over here that we are looking for, in that case, this is a course we're looking for. And what should we do? We can simply say uh, the marks that we are looking for is reassigned to current dot marks. Okay, you should really want to get used to the uh, dot notation over here. We use that a lot in this uh, particular tutorial series, and dot notation is really the main learning outcome for this tutorial. Okay, so now you can see that the convenience of using current over here. 
What if the current was not declared over here? What should we do? Let's say if we did not declare current over here, what we had to do was would be courses I, replace that courses I, and then courses I. I wouldn't say which one is better, but whichever one you feel comfortable comfortable to raise your right by yourself. But you should not really know both. Okay, but I'll just leave the, the current version over here, uh, so you can uh, you can go back to the current uh, the current version if you prefer. Okay, and then eventually we just return the marks. Okay, let's see if this will uh, do. Basically, what we're trying to do is we'll scan through the array one uh, one position by one position, and then as uh, once uh, as soon as we actually find that the current course record we're looking at has the matching title, we're gonna set the marks to be a corresponding one, and then we'll keep going until the end, and then we'll uh, stop uh, terminate loop. So that means at the moment, how many times will the loop run? It will be from zero until this that courses that length minus one. So that'll be exactly corresponding to the size of the array, which is in this case one, two, three, four, five, five times. But do we do you expect to run into any trouble in this case? Okay? My little bit hints for you. What would happen, let's say, when we run, so this is will be the first iteration, second iteration, third iteration. So these seem to be okay, but now what about the fourth iteration and the fifth iteration? You can see for these two iterations here, they do not point to any objects of type course record. In which case, what's going to happen when we say course is i? For example, i could be the value, let's say, uh, 3, and i could be the value 4. What if we say course is uh, at position 3 dot title dot equals title? What's going to happen? So you can see that courses at position three dot title, what's that gonna be? Or to be more precise, what's gonna be courses at position three? Now. And then now dot title, as we illustrated before in a previous video, is going to give you now pointer exception, right? Okay, so now I'm just talking about concept. Let's really verify that we're gonna run into trouble for this particular one. Okay, so now let's go to our student tester over here, let's let's get the marks. Okay, as out. Okay, let's say uh, marks uh, marks of EECS 2030. So now we can say s dot get marks and then we can say EECS 2030. Okay, now what's gonna happen? Okay. Now, if we try that, let's see if we will really run into the null pointer exception as we expected. Okay, let's see exactly if that's the case. Okay, did we actually, okay, s dot get marked EECS 2030. Let me just make sure I'm really running the right thing. Okay, we do expect to see uh, the null pointer exception. So EECS 2030, and then we have students over here, and then we also got uh, get marks, and then title dot equals title, the course at the length, okay? So let's try again. Student tester here, let to be safe. Let's say run, student tester. Okay, so we do have the null pointer exception that we expected. Okay, you can see that. So where did this null pointer exception occur? You can now click on this. You can see that it occurs somewhere over here, exactly line 61. You can see that information over here is very valuable. So let's try to see what this is trying to tell you. Okay, it, uh, these two lines over here. Okay, so now it tells you that in the main method of student tester in line number 44, Okay, it goes from bottom to top. In line number 44 of the student tester class, we are trying to say s.getMarks. Somewhere along the way of executing s.marks, it's giving you the null pointer exception, but exactly which line. So the next one, so line 61, you can click on the link. Line 61 of students, it tells you this line gives you trouble, as exactly as I illustrated to you. Okay, but now let's go, you, let's you, now use the debugger to see exactly how this is going to occur. Okay, let's go back to student tester over here. Let's put a breakpoint here. And then we'll run the debugger and see exactly how this is going to occur. Okay. 
So now we stop here. Let's now step into the execution for the get marks over here. Okay. So now we can let's think about this. We expect to see no problem when we go to for i counter zero counter uh the i the loop counter being zero being one and being two. These the first three iterations should be okay because they refer to the uh, uh, sound object that's not now. But starting from the fourth iteration over here, we're going to run into trouble. Okay, let's see how it is the case. Okay, so now what we can do is uh, initially marks, uh, let's step over. Initially, marks will just be minus one. And then we initialize the i counter to be zero. And now you can see what's i at the moment. If you move your mouse over, i is equal to zero. Courses at position zero, courses at position zero, and then the title will be EECS 1022. So we don't expect this uh, Boolean expression to be true. So if we step over, it's gonna skip, right? So now we, we skip this if, then, uh, if uh, branch over here and we go back to the beginning of the for loop. And then we're gonna increment I plus plus. And then when we go to the same expression again, I has been incremented from zero to one. So now I would be just one. So what's courses at position one? Courses at position one is referring to this object over here, which has a title 2030, okay? And then if you do that, you will see that we do enter the if uh, branch and then we are reassign courses i the marks, which will be zero, okay? That's what we will do, okay? So now, what about the next? So we'll keep going because uh, we want to uh, iterate through all the courses, okay? So now if you try that uh, again, uh, the third iteration you can see i is now, uh, the value is two. And then courses at position two will give you the title EECS3311, which means we'll skip that again, okay? And then now here comes the thing. Now i is now equal to three. So that means we are now over here, okay? And then you can see that what's courses at position i, which is three. What's courses i? Three. How do we see that? So if you see also uh, over here, you can see courses i, first of all, you can see that's now. Also, uh, the uh, uh, Android Studio debug is really smart enough to show you that the expression that you care for this particular line, courses i is equal to now. And then if you expand the courses array, you can see that it only got zero, one, and two. And then courses at position uh, i, which is uh, three, is actually null, so it's not listed here, okay? It's a little bit uh, tedious, but you should really know how to do this. Otherwise, you, know, you will run into trouble when you write, uh, write a code like this, okay? Okay, and then we can see that, we can expect to see courses i is gonna be null. And now the title will give us null pointer exception. That's exactly what's going to happen. You can see courses at position i the marks will give you Java the land null pointer exception. That's exactly what's going to happen. Okay. If you try to step over again, so now we run into trouble. So the uh, program will just crash and stop. Okay. So that's uh, what I want to show you. Okay. So now how do we fix this? The way to fix this would be, so some of you might be thinking about the following fix, okay, which is okay only for this particular example, but only for this particular input, but it's gonna fail in general. Let me tell you the intermediate fix. Some of you might be thinking that uh, as soon as we actually found that, as, as soon as we found that uh, it's actually a matching title over here, we can simply say return, uh, courses at position i dot marks and then i just comment this out so this is oh this is a okay fix only for the inputs that we have over here the title okay the, the one i particular the particular one i gave to you which is eacs 2030 okay i'm gonna give you one case where this solution is also going to fail what if the title we give over here does not actually exist in the array over here, okay? You can see we got 1022, we got 2030, we also got 3311. What about I give you EECS 2011? Okay, what's gonna happen over there? Okay, let's see. That means I also, I still never got a chance to enter the if statements. 
you can see that the return statements only works if we do have a course title that matches the title over here. But when you call this method here, you have no idea whether uh, the people using this method is going to always go give you some existing course title. If they don't, that means you will never get a chance to return. In that case, you will still scan through the entire array, in which case you can still get to position three and give you a null pointer exception. Okay, let me just illustrate this to you. First of all, let's double check. This solution only works if the course title actually exists in the array, which is not general enough, but let's make sure it works first of all. Okay, let's now go to your student tester over here. So now uh, let me just say launch and let's see what we have. Okay, you can see that marks of 2030 is zero, which is correct. So it only works in this case. I'm going to make a comment for you and then I will tell you how you can fail. This solution only works if input title exists in the array, in which case if 2030 exists, it's going to return before we reach the uh, uh, third or fourth position. We will, but, okay, let me just, uh, okay, but no pointer exception might occur if title does, doesn't exist. Okay, I just put it in the same line so it's more obvious. It's associated with this particular line, okay? The solution works if input title exists, but it doesn't work if the title does not exist, in which case we got null pointer exception. Let's see exactly how that's gonna happen, okay? Now, if I just go back to student tester over here, if I say system that out that print line over here, and then marks off, let's say 2011. Okay, and then I'll put 2011 over here. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen here, okay? So now 2011 does not exist in the array. Of course it's right, 2011, not here. 2011, not here. 2011, also not here, okay? So that's what's gonna happen. If I execute this block of code, and then you will see that we still got a null pointer exception. You can see we can we could retrieve 2030's mark, but for 2011, we couldn't, okay? Now, you can run the debugger by yourself, but I'll just briefly mention that why you got into this exception here. Let's think about how the loop is gonna run. When I counter, when the loop counter is zero, so now we got a title 1022, which does not match 2011. Position one, 2030 also does not match 2011. When we go to position two, also 3311 does not match 2011. So now we'll go to the next position until the end, remember? So that's, you can see in general, the real problem is this condition over here. We say that uh, in general, we should, no matter what, we should re always go in until the end of the array, even though we have some null slots in the array, okay? Remember when we first created the array, we say that we can we can have up to five courses for each for each student, up to five. That means current, uh, at, at some moments, uh, we may not have exactly five. It might be zero, might be one, might be two, might be three, might be four, and might be five, right? So there are many possibilities. So now this is exactly the case where not all the slots of the array are occupied, okay? So some of them are pointing to null, especially starting from at some point until the end, uh, the, the slots are null. So how can we actually solve this problem in a more general way? Okay, so I'm gonna comment this out. So I would suggest you don't try this kind of solution over here because in general, it doesn't work as I illustrated to you, okay? Be careful, okay? So now I'll just leave the comments there for you. And then, so now how can we solve this problem over here? The way to solve this is as follows, okay? So now we want to change this a little bit to say, it somehow makes sense to say, if I want to examine which course title may match the one I input, let's say 2011, uh, let's say uh, 2030. So I only have to look at the slots that are actually not null. For those slots that are actually already null, I shouldn't really bother to even look at them, okay? For our particular pattern, we know that NOC is currently pointing to three over here. NOC, you can see the value is three over here, right? Okay, let me just uh, illustrate it very quickly. You can see that NOC is now three. 
you can think about conceptually, NOC is pointing to uh, the index three. That means any index value that's strictly smaller than NOC, in which case will be zero, one, and two. So these slots are guaranteed to be occupied already. So for, given that we are follow we are following the pattern that we have uh, taught you in the previous video. So any index that is strictly smaller than NOC is guaranteed to be occupied. So in this case, we can say that we'll only go from counter starting from zero and only go until NOC minus one, in this case two, okay? Because you can see three minus one will be two. So that's the idea, okay? So this, this tells you the most important thing for this particular video. So whenever you're following, you're having an array of objects that you're storing as attributes, you should not try to exam, uh, whenever you want to get some information out of the array, you should not try to scan through the entire array. You should always only use the NOC as a reference point for you, okay? So now that means, okay, I'm gonna just cut this uh, and then I'll put it back later. Okay, I'll say i is less than this dot NOC. Okay, that's the solution. Okay, so now at the same time, I'm gonna say the following. Warning is wrong uh, state condition because when NOC, uh, because there might be uh, slots of the array that store nobs. Okay, exactly what we saw over here, right? Three and four. So now one more, one more uh, small question for you. What would be the value of NOC if the entire array is fully occupied, which means we have added five courses. So if we have added five courses, the NOC would be exactly five. That means NOC rather than pointing to here, NOC will be pointing to here, right? In that case, NOC will be exactly equal to five. In that case, if you try to apply the same mechanism over here, this dot NOC will just be five. So we'll still go through zero, one, two, three, four, still the entire array. So nothing missing over there, okay? Let me just uh, put that special case for you. When the entire array is fully occupied, i.e. maximum number of courses uh, and then we can say course record objects addresses are store, right? So we store this many uh, addresses. Well, we got one, two, three, four, five, let's say. In that case, the value of the value of NOC would be five, right? Or would be exactly this many, would be exactly this, okay? Would be exactly this. Remember, when we first created the array, the size of the array is maximum number of courses, okay? So now, it will be exactly that. The value of NOC will be maximum number of courses and the iteration and we are guaranteed to run exactly, you can see, starting from zero and strictly less than this dot NOC, which is maximum number of courses. That means we run exactly uh, maximum number of courses iterations. Exactly this many. Okay, so this is a little bit uh, requires some thinking about how the pattern works. So we just provide an insight to you. So you should really review this concept more carefully. Okay, so now, so what's really uh, what's really important over here is to say, so you should whenever you're trying to go through the array, be, uh, you should always use uh, the counter over here as the reference point as uh, to say that's the upper that's the largest value we're gonna look at as index. Okay, NOC minus one that will be always the case rather than uh, the length of the array, which can cost you, uh, which can trigger the null pointer exception. Okay, so now let's go back to our original uh, uh, tester over there and let, let's now test it, okay? So now, so for 2011, in this case, what do we expect to see? You can see that now for 2011, because we know that we'll never get into the if statements, that means the marks will remain to be minus one, 
which is okay for now. We'll introduce an error handling mechanism, some simple ones uh, uh, later in a later video. Okay, let's now run the tester again. Okay, so now it will just work without the, the uh, intermediate return statements. You can see, so now 2030 will be zero and 2011, which does, does not exist, will be minus one. Okay, so now let's now, that's about this particular accessor method. Okay, get marks. Okay, so now let's do a, something that's very similar. Let's do another mutator method, which is going to change the marks for each course. Because every time if you can only get a marks for the course, it's very limited. You also want to be able to change the courses, right? You may want your student to be regraded. Okay, now the second method I want to do for this video is, uh, let's see here. Okay, so now S is still the uh, context object, so it's still this object over here, and then the set marks is gonna be a mutated method returning void. And it takes two inputs. So now we say that it's going to take, uh, the first input would be some course title, like for example, ECS 2030, and we know that it's gonna match this particular object over here, we know that. And then we wanna change its marks from whatever the current mark is to 65. That means we wanna change that to be 65. So the process is gonna be very similar to what we did for get marks. We're just gonna add a little bit uh, detail over there, a little bit additional step. So again, we're gonna go over s.courses over here, go over the array, and as we learned that, we should only go from zero, one, two, and strictly smaller than the current NOC value, okay? Rather than the length of the array. That's really important to note, okay? And then we know that as soon as we, we find the record, course record to be uh, change the marks will simply set the mark because we also we got a set marks uh, method for the course objects we'll set that to be whatever it is for example 65 okay so now let's do that very quickly okay let's define a new method over here so let me just copy the contents of uh, comments over here given the title of the course and a and new marks so now rather than return, we're doing a mutated method. Change its uh, marks to be the new marks, okay? So now we can say void, let's say set marks. So string, also we have title, but now we have additional inputs. So we can say integer, uh, you, can, you can say uh, n, n, new marks, or it's spelled out, new marks. Okay, so now let's make it more precise, okay? So now we know, as we learned from before, this is the pattern that we have to follow, okay, over here. Okay, so now we'll say for integer i is assigned to zero i less than this dot noc, and i plus plus. Again, the most important de uh, thing you should really understand is why we sh really should use i less than this dot noc as opposed to this dot courses dot length, okay? To avoid null pointer exception when the array is not fully occupied, okay? When there are some null slots, okay? And then we can say if courses, uh, the position i dot title dot equals title, in that case, so now rather than set some marks to be some very uh, some value, we're gonna say, so we can say uh, courses uh, at position i dot set marks. The reason that this will work is you can see courses i, for example, courses at position one, let's say, okay, let's see, uh, let's see, for example, courses at position one is referring to this particular course record objects, and we know that what we can use a dot to say we want to call a particular mutated method on this particular object. So courses in position i is referring to this object here, and then for, we can go further by calling a mutated method. Okay, so now that's why we can say set marks. But what the, what the marks should be, we just say it should be the new marks. Okay, whatever the new marks over here is. Okay, and that's it. Done. Okay, so now let's try. So now what we can do is we can now go back to a student tester over here and then what we will do is, okay, now let's do the following. So now let's expand the uh, previous one a little bit. We can say the marks for 2030 uh, and for 1022 and 3311. Okay, so now 
what we will do is we will say 1022, 2030, and 3311. So these are the two, uh, three courses we have, 1022, 2030, and 3311. And then we want to see what their marks are. 1022, 2030, 3311. Okay, so now first of all, let's see what they sh should look like. Let's do that first. Okay, you can see that uh, zero, uh, have we set, uh, we haven't set a mark yet, not yet, okay? So now before we set a mark, it's gonna be zero, zero, 084 and minus one. Okay, zero, zero, not, be, not uh, before we set it to 65, zero, zero, and then 84. 84 is actually from the previous one over here. Okay, but we're gonna set it again, okay? And then minus one over here for 2011 because it doesn't exist. Okay, good. So now we want to set the mark, uh, we're gonna set the marks. How do we do that? So now we can say, uh, as out after setting EECS 1022 marks to, let's say, uh, I don't know, what about what about 72? Okay, let's do 72. And it's because it's a mutated method, so it does not return anything. So we can say s dot set marks EECS 1022, and then we can set it to be, let's say 72. Okay, and then let's do also for all the other two. Okay, after setting EECS 2030's marks to, as we want to do, we did to do, do 65, let's say. So I believe it's C plus, okay? 65, and then EECS uh, 2030, and then set it to 65. And finally, after setting 3311 to, let's make it higher, what about 81? Okay, it's A. 81, and then we'll do 3311. Okay, that's what we have, all right? So we set the three marks. And after these, what should we get? Let's see what we will get. S out, and then, and then after this, we can just uh, print out S dot to string again. So we can see exactly uh, how the three courses will be changed for their marks, okay? So now you might be wondering, what about we also say, uh, Let's do one, one more line, okay? After setting EECS 2011, let's say to some marks, let's say 61. Now what's gonna happen to 2011? Because 2011 doesn't even exist, what you will do is, you will simply just go through the loop over here. It's gonna scan through from index zero until NOC minus one, which will be exactly these three slots over here, one, two, and three. None of them has the title matching 2011, which means we never get into this particular branch for the if statement. So that means we never do anything, just do nothing, okay? But that's okay, because we didn't forbid the user to pass any non-existing course, so that we should also support that, okay? Student tester over here. So now, what do we have? So now let's try to run the uh, program and let's see what the uh, uh, output should be. So now let's be careful over here. You can see now uh, after setting the marks, right? After setting these marks over here, and then NOC is still three. We still got three courses. We haven't added any new course, but now you can see that EECS 1022, we got grade B, 72. And also for EECS 2030, we got 65, which is C plus. And also for EECS 3311, we got 81, which is A and we still got the two null slots. And because we actually did the loop by using this.noc as the uh, upper bound for the loop counter. So we are guaranteed, we actually never uh, check these two null slots as part of the loop iterations. Okay, that's really important. Okay, so now so now we have done the two, uh, uh, the two methods, one mutator and one accessor. Okay, so now what we would like to do Let's see what's left. Okay, 
So now what I want to show you very briefly as a preview for the next video is to see uh, the follows, as follows. So now if you go to the, uh, let me close the course record class over here. If you look at these two methods here, you can see that for the get marks method, you can see that we are trying to go over from zero until this dot NOC minus one, right? We got strictly less than. And we do something over here to say, if this condition matches, we got to do something. And you can see that for the set marks, we're doing something very similar. We are basically repeating the same header of the loop over here. We are also repeating this uh, if condition over here. And then we'll do, just say, if that matches, we'll do something, right? So we are really, again, duplicating the code for twice. As we know, the uh, array, uh, the, uh, the attribute courses, is of type array for this particular class. So we should really expect many future methods to really iterate through the array to check something. If we, every time we add a new method, we have to repeat this pattern again, that means our code is gonna smell a lot. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can define a helper method to get rid of this smell.